Hello, it's Midday Live on TV3. I'm Stephen NT, and uh, we're live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. Our top stories this afternoon, governments working with employers to develop workplace guidelines to curb COVID-19. As Ghana's case count now, 5,530 with 674 recoveries. And elsewhere around the world, authorities in northeastern Nigerian state of Yoba say 471 people have died in the past five weeks from health issues. Of details of all these stories, plus the very latest in sports business and entertainment coming up over the hour. Now, government is working with employers to develop workplace guidelines, also hinting of measures to deal with persons who flout safety protocols. At a bi-weekly uh, media briefing on COVID-19, Minister of Health Kwekwajima Menu also urged Ghanaians to adhere strictly to directives put in place to curb the spread of coronavirus in the country. When we continue to do our things in groups, we increase positivity. Those in the factories, those in work camps, mines, the railway workers at um, Eastern, region, Eastern region. So what do we do? They are asking us to observe social distancing. Yet, we are not some of us behave as if we haven't heard what is going on. So we should begin to accept the fact that the disease will be here for a while, but we should try to reduce the rate at which we are spreading and getting infected. We start the fight very early. So this education has been going on and on and on and on. And I'm pleading that education that we are getting should be taken in consideration and protect yourself and ourselves because if you get it it is very likely that the next person close to will have it so let us wear the masks let us wash hands let us sanitize where necessary let us keep away from each other social distancing and these are very critical things that will help us bring down the rate at which we are spreading the disease. And we have been thinking about what next do we do to enforce strict compliance with these basic guidelines. We are working on that. I believe soon we will see the police arresting some of us who are becoming too recalcitrant. And if you are jailed for three months for not wearing a mask in public, Probably will take a clue from that. And according to a top official at the World Health Organization, the novel coronavirus might never go away and instead could take a status similar to HIV or AIDS. Dr. Mike Ryan, who serves as the agency's authority on emergencies, told an online briefing Wednesday that the virus might be impervious to total obliteration. This is what we all fear, is a vicious cycle of public health disaster followed by economic disaster, followed by public health disaster, followed by economic disaster. Um, there is some magical thinking going on uh, that uh, lockdowns work perfectly um, and that uh, unlocking lockdowns will go great. Uh, both are fraught with dangers. Um, just putting in place swinging lockdowns can do as much harm as good if it's not done, as Maria said, carefully. This virus may become just another endemic virus in our communities, and this virus may never go away. HIV has not gone away, but we've come to terms with the virus, and we have found the therapies, and we've found the prevention methods, and people don't feel as scared uh, as they did before, and we're offering life to people with HIV, long, healthy lives to people with HIV. Uh, and I'm not comparing the two diseases, but I think it is important that we're realistic. And I don't think anyone can predict when or if this disease will disappear. We do have one great hope. If we do find a highly effective vaccine, 
uh, that we can distribute to, uh, to everyone who needs it in the world, we, w we may have a shot at eliminating uh, this, uh, this uh, virus. You know, the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture has reiterated that drinking bars and nightclubs will remain closed as part of efforts to curb the spread of COVID-19. The clarification was necessitated after a statement from the Ghana Tourism Authority indicated hotels, restaurants and bars could resume operations with enhanced social distancing protocols. Uh, Barbara Oting Jesse is Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture. We also recognize that this um, issue may have arisen because of um, an inadvertent um, indication of drinking bars being exempt in the EI-64. When you look at clause 1 of the EI, which lists activities that are banned, it includes nightclubs and drinking bars. But when you get to the clause where they indicate the exemptions, all the activities that are listed under exemptions are not captured under clause 1 in position of restrictions. So we have given it a passive interpretation to indicate that the inclusion of drinking bars in clause 4 under exemptions was inadvertent on the parts of the drafts and therefore right from the beginning of application the ban on public gatherings drinking bars as well as nightclubs were banned from operating the status quo remains drinking bars nightclubs are not open food chains restaurants can operate per the guidelines that we're given in respect of takeout and delivery services Hotels are exempt, but we also issued guidelines to the hotels in respect of taking care of their guests within their premises. We know that the way hotels are set up, guests have their rooms, they have their washrooms in there, and they can undertake all their activities within their rooms. The hotel restaurants cannot provide buffet dinner, buffet lunch, where we can go and congregate to have a meal. But they can take care of their guests whilst they are with them by providing them with food. And I think that when we comply with all these directives, we are protecting ourselves, we are protecting um, the general public by um, ensuring that we do not have community spread. And very soon, we shall overcome this COVID-19 disease and return to normalcy where we can enjoy all our social activities. And some health facilities in the western region are being forced to reschedule the sample taking of contacts traced for confirmed uh, COVID-19 cases due to the non-availability of PPEs for their staff. Eight health workers in the region have so far tested positive for COVID-19. One of them has died. One of the health workers say uh, they will not, some of the health workers, I beg your pardon, say that they will not uh, work if they don't get PPEs to work with. Uh, we'll go live to Kwesiminti Municipal Hospital where my colleague Eric Yawaje is standing by with details. Here at the Kwesiminti Government Hospital, and this point that I'm standing is what we refer to as the pre triage. Essentially, anybody who is visiting the facility will have to come to this point to undergo certain uh, safety protocols before they are allowed entry into the main facility. Now, this is an innovation. They are not using the Veronica bucket, but they've erected a sink and also a hand dryer so that it will promote continuous use, we will not have an issue where there will not be soap, then the tap, the vertical bucket will be out of water. Now, what we are hearing is that some staff here are saying that they are not going to work. Why? Because they don't have PPEs to work with. We are currently learning that, in fact, they had to reschedule some appointment with some persons that were picked up for contact tracing. So I have with me the medical superintendent for the facility for him to respond to certain questions about some demands that are coming from the staff members. Uh, good afternoon, welcome to Midday Live on TV3. Good afternoon. So this is what your staff are saying, that um, because of the non-availability of PPEs, they are not going to work. Oh, that's true, and I think they are right. 
isn't it? Each one for himself, and God is for us all. So if they are not provided the PPEs, I think they shouldn't. They shouldn't. But the work should be done. So we are trying to get the PPEs to give to them. But it's not easy. In fact, we've been moving around through people to come and help us. We've also tried getting in touch with suppliers to get it for us. But now you know in Ghana, once they know that you need it so much, the prices are going so high that we can't even afford it. Mm. Can you imagine one N95 cost about 30 Ghana? And that one, you can't even reuse it. So it means the moment I remove this one, I have to throw it away. And it's costing 30. So in a day, how many um, N95 will you have to use? A lot. We have to give all the staff who are getting in touch with patients one each a day. So we use it for the whole day. Mm. And we use over 80 to 100 a day, giving it to all staff to work with. So the cost is not easy for us. Currently, what is your stock? Hmm, we have none. Have now, none? exactly, we have none in stock. We started getting in touch with suppliers to get some of them for us, but still difficult. Some of them will promise you tomorrow we'll bring some, but I'm sure they are also having difficulties getting some to supply. So, so we still don't have anything now. Are we going to get to a point where we'll come to Kwasimitim Government Hospital and nobody will be there to attend to patients? Maybe gradually it's getting there. Gradually it's getting there. The one you are seeing me wearing, I have to recycle it because had I, thrown, exactly, had I thrown it away yesterday, I wouldn't have gotten any to use for today. So it's recycled. So I'm thinking when it gets to that peak, maybe it will be difficult to work. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Kessie, you are the administrator. You were telling me about the fact that you had to reschedule some sample um, taking. Tell us about that. Yes, uh, we had one confirmed case over the weekend. And you know, as the protocol demands, once you have a case confirmed, you need to follow up on all the contacts and also ask them to see whether they, they come out positive or negative. So the result of the confirmed case was received over the weekend, that is on Saturday. So we had to do the contact tracing and then test them. But the landlord advised that where the, the confirmed case was living. He advised that because of stigmatization and all the other things, he would want the tenant to come to the hospital and then for their samples to be taken. Uh -huh. So Monday, we started calling them to come. Unfortunately, they came and we had run out of stock for N95 uh, respirators. So Monday, we had to ask them to go and come on Tuesday with the hope that by Tuesday we would have received some from some of the suppliers that we contacted. On Tuesday they came and it was the same thing. Uh, so we had to reschedule their screening for today. Fortunately today we were able to get two boxes from the suppliers. Uh -huh. But we are going to deal with about 50, 50 people of the, as contacts from the confirmed case. And uh, so the two boxes is already gone. gone. That's why my med soup said that as at now, the stock level is nil. But we have been able to deal with the, the contacts of the, the one confirmed case that we have over the weekend. But if we should have cases coming now, suspected ones, it will be difficult to do screening. But don't you rely on the regional medical stores? We have been going there. The, occasionally, the access to come for... Uh, these PPEs, but I think it, it also depends on what they receive from national. So I think with the onset of COVID, we have been there for about four times. Uh, but the only issue is that what we get from there is woefully inadequate. Uh, sometimes you go and then you have, for instance, the last consignment we went for, we were given one piece, not one box. So. One piece. One piece, right. yes, one piece of N95 and then two pieces of coverall. This is not even sufficient for one patient for a day. Uh, so that is the situation. So what we have been doing is to procure from the open market, from other suppliers to supplement what we get from medical stores. Unfortunately, for the past two weeks, it's been so difficult getting from these suppliers. I, for whatever reasons, I do not know. That is what has accounted for the situation we find ourselves in now. When we were getting from the suppliers, we were procuring. Uh -huh. Because for the medical stores one, 
You can't rely on no, 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 no. You can't rely on that. No, but if you look at our case now, eight health workers have tested positive for COVID-19. One is dead. So your staff are within their right if they say that if they don't get the PPEs, they are not going to work. Yes, it is. It is absolutely right. And so we, as management, need to uh, devise strategies. Uh, to get these PPEs for them. You cannot put their lives at risk. You can't put their lives at risk. So in the meantime, uh, what are the concrete measures you are putting in place to ensure that tomorrow, tomorrow next, we'll come to a field a meeting and there are no doctors, no nurses, and what have you? We are doing our best. As I said, we are trying to now recycle what is not supposed to be recycled. Hmm. So now a number of staff are using recycled materials. Others are supposed to, or others are using this cloth mask, which is not supposed to be used in a facility, right? So we are doing our best, but we hope something drastic happens so that we don't come to a halt as far as operations are concerned. Okay. Thank you very much. So you heard me speak with some uh, facility managers here at the Efia Kwesimensi Municipal Health um, Hospital. Now, they paint a very grim picture about the fact that um, there's non-availability of PPEs for staff to work. Eric QRJ, TV3 News, if you have a question. On here in the studio, I'm Stephen N.T. Now, Ghana's COVID-19 case count stands at 5,530. As of Wednesday, May 13, from, uh, moving from 5,400. 108 cases. 12, 122 new cases have been added with recoveries standing at 674. Director in charge of Public Health Division at the Ghana Health Service, uh, Dr. Bedusa Kodier, gave the figures Thursday morning in Accra. The last briefing, the new cases confirmed that added to what we reported. 122 with the distributions in Greater Accra 57, Shanty Region 62, Central Region 2, and Western North 1. Uh, two more new deaths were added up, bringing the death toll to 24. With 24 deaths among 5,530 cases. The death to positivity rate, which we term as the case fatality rate, stands at 0.43% for the country. Um, the total number of recoveries have increased, and indeed we have done quite a significant number of people having done the first uh, test, which is negative, and you are waiting for the second test to declare them Recovered, fully recovered. And the total number of recoveries as of now stands at 674. I'll just give a bit of details with regards to the new cases that we confirmed. In Greater Accra, um, 57 cases reported came from Tabame 51, Ashama 2, only one and one each from Accra Metro, La Dadi Kotopon, and um, yes, I think these are the districts from Accra. Um, Central Region reported two new cases, one each from Ewuti Senya, East Kaswa, and then Uniba, one each. Ashanti Region reported 62 new cases. For 12 from Kumasi Metro, Obuase Municipality 22, Askori Mampon 1, Efijasachre South 2, Atrima Kwangoma 19, Pai 1, um, Tao 1, and then Salvation Army Hospital also reported. One. Uh, we had one new case from Bibiani, which is from Western North. This brings to the total new confirmed cases to 122. And the Ghana Immigration Service in the Western region has arrested 35 Ecos nationals for attempting
to enter the country illegally. 13 of them have been quarantined and samples for COVID-19 testing, uh, while their remaining 22 have been repatriated. The new arrests and repatriations bring to the total of 365 ECOWAS nationals who have been intercepted. Only last two days, they went round and they've again arrested some 35 persons who were trying to enter illegally. Now, I have with me the Western Region Public Relations Officer for the Ghana Immigration Service, Assistant Inspector Moses Manford Akapu, for him to tell us about the recent arrest of 35 individuals. The first operation took place on the 12th of May. And we arrested 12 Burkinabi nationals and one Ghanaian. And upon interrogation, we realized that they have come to the municipality from various parts of the country, for which reason uh, there was a need for us to conduct some tests on them. So quickly, Port Health officials were brought in to take their bodies temperature, after which the Municipal Security Council met and decided that since they are coming from various parts of Ghana, there was the need for them to be quarantined and their samples taken. After the results have been received, then they will take a decision as to what to do with them. What about those who were refused entry? Those operations took place yesterday and at uh, two different locations within the Jomoro uh, Newtown uh, area. Now, the first one had to do with some uh, foreign nationals, ECOWAS nationals, who were trying to enter the country from the Jomoro area, Newtown area, even though the border is closed. So quickly, they were intercepted by our officers and because of the proximity between where the arrest took place and the border we quickly dispatched them by informing the officers at the other side of the border i mean the ivorian authorities of the arrest and handing them over to them for them to be uh, sent back second one also consists of some Again, ECOWAS nationals who also tried using other areas within the same municipality mm. to enter. So in all, we intercepted 35 ECOWAS nationals and the breakdown are 19 uh, Burkinabis, 11 Ivorians, 2 Nigerians, 1 Beninois, one Guinean and one Ghanaian. This is still midday live from our studios at Addis Kanda. Welcome back. This is the business segment on Midday Live. Now, government has instructed the Ghana Revenue Authority to reverse the 50 and 30 percent benchmark value uh, reduction on some imported commodities at the country's ports. In a letter signed by the Acting Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Amisha Dai Ousuansa, directed all sector commanders and the Custom Technical Service Bureau to ensure compliance effective May 15. Some of the goods excluded from the benchmark values, including frozen food imports and pharmaceuticals. Benchmark values are reference values that customs uses in determining values that could be imposed on imports meant for clearance at the country's ports. And the executive director of the National Board for Small Scale Industries, Kosi Yanki IS, says a one year moratorium period will be given to all micro, small, and medium scale enterprises uh, who will benefit from government's 600 million Ghana city stimulus package. She revealed it will take two weeks 
after completion of the application for disbursement to begin, as she spoke in an exclusive interview on 3FM's morning show, Sunrise. The President Nanadu Dankwe Kufado mentioned clearly and stated that this there would be an up to one year moratorium, right, which is quite unprecedented. And then after that, there's a two to three year repayment um, window mm -hmm. so that there will be the flexibility. And I, I speak about this because of the enormity of the task. So if someone comes and says, I can pay within six months, that's beautiful. We would look at that and that I feel like within six months my COVID issues would be done. That's fine. But bear in mind that we're giving the flexibility for people to be able to re-engineer themselves at a time when we have an emergency crisis. Because as I keep saying, this is an emergency and we need to work to support. And that's what this fund is about. It's about giving hope in Idaho to support the businesses do well at a time like this. There's another question says, what is the estimated time for the processing of application from submission of application to actual disbursement period? Yes. So one of the things we need to take care of is that we look at submission of completed application. So we need to focus on that. And we've given a timeline of up to two weeks from the time submission is done mm. for disbursement. And that's hoping to be the worst case scenario. This is not one of the situations where some financial institutions will take long. No. Mm -hmm. We've worked with them and have aligned. And so that this would be done in within a, a quick period of time to get things done. Uh, the Driver and, uh, and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA, in the Ashanti region recorded a 30% increase in patronage of services in the first quarter of the year. Despite the negative impact of COVID-19 on businesses, the authority licensed 10,586 vehicles as against a figure of 8,100 within the same period, the previous year, 2019. Beatrice Fiogabra has more. All clients who visit the Ashanti region DVLE have their temperature checked, mandated to wear nose masks and obliged to follow hand washing protocols. For those who do not have nose masks, these kids have strategically positioned themselves at the entrance to make sales. Head of the DVLA in the region, George Afu, says staff run a two-week rotation system while service personnel stay at home to ease congestion in the offices. Clients also wait at the long room to aid social distancing. Before even you get access to our premises, it's mandatory. You need to wear your respirators, which we call the face marks, engineers call respirators. Then you have to have the protocol of cleaning your hands. You have a stand pipes at the entrance gate to with, with all the facilities, the soaps and the uh, tissue papers, you have to go through those protocols. We have a sanitizer uh, dispenser also there to also facilitate the cleaning. The authority saw a positive variance in services for the first quarter of 2020. George Afo said COVID-19 is yet to adversely impact on operations. The peak period, which was the January and February, has been able to iron out the stresses that COVID has brought. All services saw a positive variance as the authority scaled up its services before the lockdown was announced. Revenue targets for the year could, however, be achieved even if COVID-19 lingers on within the second and third quarters of the year. An investment has generally dipped globally as the world battles COVID-19. Here in Ghana, most people are moving from restructuring their investment portfolio or halting it totally. An investment advisor, Kinsley Hayford, says strategic investments into the agri and IT sector is key. He spoke to Etanamse on New Day. My, my research shows that about 60% of our land is uncultivated in Africa. And so therefore, the land is key, it is good. Again, the population is heading between 7 billion to 8 billion and about. So but what if I don't have access to land? I mean, that's a key uh, requirement to start something. You, there are two ways to have in land. Okay. Either you buy it or you lease. Okay. And so you can also partner. As of 2016 December, mm -hmm. when the, the coconut oil was going for $720 per metric ton, the palm oil 
was going seven hundred sixty nine dollars per metric ton. That's as enough. against the oil, which was going for sixty three dollars per barrel. Crude oil, yeah. sixty three dollars mm. per barrel. So, and I will look forward for, and those who are into IT to develop different types of apps to solve problems. Mm -hmm. I wish. The gentleman who created the Zoom was a Ghanaian. He reiterates the need to start one's own business as COVID-19 presents a brilliant opportunity. After doing your budget, if you can even sell something just in front of your house, start. Mm -hmm. You can also take a temporary job. Mm -hmm. You may have a friend who is to maybe bakery, mm -hmm. and you can say, look, can I come there and just join you, come and support you? Maybe coming home, you get... A loaf of bread for the family. For the family. This is a time to do some temporary jobs. Mm -hmm. Connect to people. He adds governments are justified to adopt emergency measures designated to protect public health during health crises like the COVID-19 pandemic. However, it is also important to ensure that such measures do not unreasonably jeopardize investments and breach investment-related obligations, he said. That's our wrap up with the business segment on Midday Live. I'm Stephen Ante. We have more news for you. Please stay. Welcome back. Uh, a 26 year old father who allegedly inflicted wounds on his three year old son in Kumasi has been granted bail due to a COVID 19 pandemic. Our reporter, Ibrahim Abubakar, has been to the court and is joining us on Skype with a live update. Ibrahim Abubakar, uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, very much uh, for your time. So uh, I want to understand uh, what's happening uh, right now. You went to court. You tell me exactly what transpired. So, Steve, um, this 26 year old has been granted bail on the condition of uh, the COVID 19. Because of the COVID 19, there are no more remanding people. So he has been asked to, uh, he has been granted bail of 50,000 Ghana cities with three sureties to reappear um, next week, Thursday, that's May 21. But the twist of the matter is that um, for now, the Mental Health Authority has also come in. They are saying they suspect the guy has some mental issues because the mother of the child really confirmed to them that the father has been taking very good care of the child. So he's in a car. Um, anytime he comes here, that's on weekends, they send the child to him for two, three days, when he's going back to Akka, then he sends the child to the mother. So he has been providing everything that the child wants. So they do not even understand why and how the father inflicted that wound to the child. So that's why they've also stepped in. They want to um, assess to find out whether indeed he's not suffering from any mental disorder. And indeed, when he came to court this morning, he's had his um, appearance, his behavior was a bit weird. And they have asked him to go back and return. That's next week. So from next week, um, Thursday, that's when the case will begin. But right. um, one thing is, when I spoke to the father of the mother of the baby, he was worried because he fears for the safety of his daughter. He believes that when the um, father gets any chance, he's likely to hurt the mother. So that's why they were also not satisfied with the court ruling, but they have no choice than to comply and come back next week. Right. Ibrahim Abubakar, thank you extremely for that snap update. Uh, that's our Ashanti regional correspondent, Ibrahim Abubakar there. This is still Midday Live. Up next is sports. Hello, a pleasant afternoon to you. It's time to do sports here on Middle Live on TV3. My name is Yao Ofusula. It's our very first story. And GFA President Kurt Okriku is calling for calm as the association navigates the confusion on when domestic football will return. The call comes as there's growing pressure on the FA to come clear on what it intends to do with the rest of the season. Speaking on Accra Bay's Happy FM, Kurt says considerations are being made and collaborations are going on to ensure that the right protocols are guaranteed before a return. This, he says, has been going on for some time with key stakeholders. I'm working closely with uh, the American committee led by the very experienced Dr. Baba, Dr. Percy and Dr. Kofi Ablo. Um, yeah, yeah, share all scenarios possible. 
say say you truncate you say say you cancel you say say you continue the medical committee uh, share all possible scenarios to be able to advise us and once we get that advice i'll go to uh, the state authority minister of youth and sports and, and engage Moving to allay the fears of all concerned, the GFA president says any decision that will be taken will be in the supreme interest of all, indicating that a conciliation, for instance, will be grave for a lot of people in the league chain. It is true, say, uh, in certain countries, Boma cancel on leaks. It's also true, say, in certain countries, Boma cancel cry. It's also true, say, in certain countries, almost suspend the year and they are coming back. I'm sure they will put together a document for us to consider. Like I said, say 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 the GFA, like many federations globally, are grappling with the potential loss of commercial revenue, TV rights revenue, and gates proceeds should a cancellation of the season happen. A possible emergency financial support from FIFA and another from the state appear the only respite they can look forward to. Well, to more stories, and the founder of King Faisal Football Club, Al Haji Karim Grusa, says he stands by his suggestion for the 2019 2020 Ghana Premier League season to be cancelled. Now, speaking to TV3 on his widely trumpeted position, Grusa maintained that his call is one of principle and the most practical thing to do, and not because his team was languishing at the bottom of the table. You see, the cancel of the league is mass, we should cancel. But me, I don't want to say anything about it because I'm the bottom of the league. But I'm preparing myself whether the league will come or not. Because I bring Serbian coach in. He watched my match. He told me, Alaji, you are positioned in this, uh, your team, the midfielder and the defense you don't have. But your attack is perfect. But now he doing better, he get some place we registered. Inshallah, other league will continue or not, we will seek him Faisal. We are thinking both, the players welfare and the sponsorship. If we are getting sponsorship, the players welfare will be superb. If we don't get, there will be uh, media, uh, half and half. You see, because of you and me, we are, we are fearing each other now. Eh? Formerly, if you are coming to interview, you are uh, coming near. Now is a social uh, distance. Then uh, why, why we should play the league? Well, that's all the sports news this afternoon here on Midday Live on TV3. My name is Yao Ofusula. We'll be back on News 360 with some more sports stories. But after the break, international news to follow. Well, the Ghanaian music industry has for a while experienced artists throwing jabs at themselves. Ghanaian rap sensation and the Obiawan master hit maker Yapono said in an interview on TV3 New Day that it's a form of growth and not personal. Ghanaian rapper Solomon Edu Enchi, known as Yapono, has quickly risen to become one of Ghana's finest freestyle hip-hop artists. After appearing on several local radio shows and competitions to get to where he is now, Yapono says he's got no problem with an artist whom he trained under his label throwing jabs at him. If tomorrow someone that I've trained before or someone that is just coming up sees he's the best or anything like that and he wants to throw shots at me, why should I, why should I mind that person? The point is this for you to be the best. The Obiawane master headmaker says he sees it as a challenge his colleagues are taking to better themselves and not a forum for hate. He also mentioned that he and his Uptown Energy team are ready to resist any artist that throws jabs at him. It's simple. Any song that will throw shots at Uptown Energy, we will resist quick. Aptness Collection 2020. Right, indeed. Obia on a master. That's how we wrap up with the midday live. Thanks for your time. On behalf of the crew here, good afternoon.